Peace to the Saints. Today we have a, a great topic. It's called Identifying Quality Women and Fake Love. I think it's probably wisest to start with the piece about fake love, and I'll tell you why. Fake love is what you experience most of the time. Quality women is the rarer part. So we'll start with fake love because you're probably more familiar with fake love, although you haven't been able to identify it and dodge it. You've experienced it a lot. Shout out to Mr. Rodriguez supporting the work with the um, badges. So the first question is from a motivational standpoint. Why is it that a woman would give you fake love? And shout out to Major Mind and Soul supporting as well. And what do we really mean when we say fake love? <laughs> well, Love is the bread and butter of the male and the female. We both seek love. We want to be loved. And romantic love is particularly enchanting for the both of us, but it's something that's hard to come by. And in the absence of the real thing, we'll take the synthetic version, females in particular. Uh, shout out to Haas supporting the work with badges. So what happens, and also shout out to NY5455 came in via Cash App. So what happens is in this modern technical era, we have people who are actually addicted to Tinder. And you know what Tinder's designed to be addictive. One of my early investors in one of my tech businesses is the uh, chairman of Magic.com, and also they own Tinder. And, and we've talked about this. There are a lot of articles on this. So Tinder is designed kind of like a love casino, if you will. And you have women, you know, women who may be a 10, women who may be a two, but all of them get an overdose of attention. So they think they're perhaps more desirable than they are. Shout out to Tamir. He writes supporting the work on all platforms. Appreciate that. And as a result, they have an easier access to men. Huh? And shout out to Marco supporting with badges. And not only do they have easier access to men, now they have some form of an ATM. Well, an ATM gives you cash and you use cash to make purchases. Well, they get to turn men into ATMs because they can utilize the men to pay for their food, take them out on dates. So let's talk about how all these things factor into fake love. So the human female, is, she wants love, just like we as men, we want love too. One thing we have to know, which is different between the male and the female, shout out to Michael supporting with badge, is... Men live firmly in reality. Women are firmly footed in fantasy. You know, you ask a guy, you know, hey, what, what's your ideal woman? He can describe it, but he's not, you know, really tied to getting that ideal woman. And he also knows where he stands in the hierarchy of things. Conversely, if you ask a woman what's her ideal man, oh, she can tell you. And, and by golly, that's the guy that she's kind of waiting on. And when she gets that guy, she's going to act right straight away. And I want to share a little story with you guys about that, because sometimes you might be dealing with a girl, but you're not her ideal man. And because you're not her ideal man, you're never going to get the highest quality of relationship and love. You heard me? She's going to kind of treat you like that stepchild. She's going to treat you like that player that came off the bench, not the one that started the game. You dig? And this is what I mean. When the woman has her ideal man, she'll do anything to keep him. And a part of doing anything to keep him means rendering acts of service, whether it's cooking, cleaning, listening, being deferential, being servile, being submissive, being feminine. She'll go out of her way for the man that is her ideal, which is why peas often tell you, you don't want the woman uh, that you want. You want the woman who wants you, which is to say you are her ideal because you'll get better behavior out of her. By the way, shout out to Sistos. Uh, he just copped four of the denim T-shirts, you dig, uh, from manandwomanbrand.com. So he didn't got dripped up in a real way. And when you're her ideal, you can basically do no wrong. The relationship is going to go stronger because she's willing to forgive you. Because ultimately she wants to keep you. Shout out to Bisto supporting with a badge. Now, conversely, when you're not her ideal man, all of a sudden she has a story on why she's not being submissive. She'll say something like, oh, well, we're not in a relationship yet. Maybe if we were in a relationship, then I'll become submissive. But she ain't even really trying to get in a relationship anyways, right? Or she'll have another story like, well, you're not in your masculine energy. That's why I'm not in my feminine energy. I've never heard this. But I'm just saying these are the stories they have. Or she'll have yet another story, which is, 
oh, we have to build that up over time. We have to develop trust before, before I act that way towards you. She doesn't want to be vulnerable, which is to say she doesn't want to take risk, which is to say she doesn't want to put in effort. That's all that means. So you're going to get a lot more trouble when you're not her ideal guy. And I, I heard a great story, which I'm going to recount to you. When I was 16 years old, I used to work at an after school program. There was one woman, a mother, and she had a bunch of kids. She had five children. And unlike the other parents, she'd show up to pick up her kids, but she'd just hang out and chop it up with me. So I was a 16 year old boy and she was probably in her late thirties and she'd just hang out at the after school program that I was working with, working at. And we just have conversation for hours until the program ends and she'd take all our kids and she'd head home. So a, a white lady. And I remember one time, you know, I'd asked her for some perspective on something because we had grown quite close because she would come every day and just hang out with me and just chop it up. Right. And at the time I had this girlfriend, beautiful young lady. I was 16. The girl was 16. Gorgeous girl. And it was an unusual thing because the girl, her mother was a, a real bona fide racist, hates black people, raised the young lady with all these negative ideas about black people. And I was the first black guy this girl had ever dealt with. And so needless to say, I wasn't her ideal because she had never even imagined you know, having any dealings with a black person, especially not romantically. So anyways, I was telling the mom, I said, hey, you know, I got this girlfriend and, you know, she was supposed to give me oral, but yeah, every time it's time to do it, she just won't do it. And she has all these explanations. And she said her mom said this about oral and blah, 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 blah. And the woman told me the most profound thing, and I'll never forget it because when she said it, it had the ring of truth. She said, you know what, Marquette? I, I know who you are. Um, I know you're really popular at the school there. And I bet any one of those girls at that school, if you, if you wanted oral sex from them, they would do it, wouldn't they? I was like, yeah, probably. She was like, yeah, that's my point. Any one of those girls at that school you go to would do it. Why is that, Marquette? I was like, well, uh, I don't know because I'm popular. She's like, yeah, because they like you because they, they really like you because you're the big man on campus. She's like, but this girl goes to a different school and, and she likes you, but she doesn't like you enough. You see, because the truth about women is, you know, if she'll give you oral sex three months uh, down the line, that means she would have gave you oral sex three minutes down the line. Because the moment she saw you, she assessed whether she was for you, whether she was down with you. And if she wasn't down at such a high level at the beginning, that lets you know that it, it took time to build, which lets you know you're, you're not like her Superman. And I was like, ooh, that's deep. That's really deep. Which is to say, over time, you kind of wore her down or she eased into you or she made you earn everything. You know, she, you didn't get any freebies with this girl. You had to earn everything like you're some sort of a peasant. And let me liken it to something else. You ever work and you're in a state of flow or you watch a basketball game and they say a, a basketball player's on fire. He's in a state of flow. Things are going well. There are no roadblocks. When a girl decide or a female decides that she's going to hold certain physical acts, uh, you know, acts of satisfaction, sexual acts, when she's going to hold them hostage, shout out to Stevie supporting with badges as well as St. Wilcox. When she decides she's going to hold that hostage, well, what she's really doing is exercising control and dominance over you and also essentially communicating to you that you're not good enough. You're not, you're not good enough to get this right now. I'm going to put you on hold. And what's more, I have such a low perspective of you that I think you're just going to behave and wait. Uh, and I don't think you have so many other options that you're going to go elsewhere for it or that I need to be feeling under threat. Whereas conversely, the woman who values you as her superhero or as her ideal, she's overvalued you, right? In her mind, you're fitting that fantasy. So in as much as you fit the fantasy, she's like, damn, I, like whatever he wants, I better do it because he is, he's up here. And if I don't do it, surely some other woman's going to do it. Some other woman's going to want him. Absolutely. This, if this man was a car, he'd be a Lamborghini. And everybody wants a Lamborghini, so I better I better stay on my job because there's other women out here out here that might take them from me. That's how she'd be behaving. So when I say you're getting fake love, you know there there are degrees to the fake love. You know I'm not saying the woman's not interested in you at all. She might be interested. You're just not. You see my uh, brightness. You're not the end all be all for that girl. And 
when you deal with a woman, especially when you're looking at a long-term relationship, you want a woman who is 100% signed up to be completely submissive to you. And as far as she's concerned, you are, you're the government, you're, you're the police, you're the judge, uh, you're, you're God, you're all those things rolled into one, which is to say she's operating under your law. And that's really all that matters to her. And let me caution you, sometimes you get various forms of fake love. I've heard, I kid you not, I've heard a woman tell me, Marquette, you are God to me. More than one woman. One in particular I'm thinking of, she says, you are God to me. Yet when it came to physicality, she wanted to delay the physicality. And I thought, no, God, God is all powerful. God is all knowing. So, so I'm your God. You know, I'm God, you're the earth. God rules over the earth. Yet you won't submit to me what I desire? No, I'm not God to you. So understand what they're delivering to you when they give you these words that are without meaning. When a woman gives you words without meaning to influence or better yet manipulate you, what she's doing is called game. Yes, we're familiar with game. We use game on women for they're not necessarily direct linear creatures. They're a bit crooked sometimes. And when they're giving us these false words, this is her game. You know, this is manipulation. And so when a woman tells you that you're her God or that she's 100% submissive to you, uh, but she doesn't submit, well, you know that you're being gamed up. You're being fooled. You're being lied to, bamboozled, hoodwinked, tricked. And they do this all the time. And the most comical thing to me is that I often hear women say that they're submissive, but very rarely are they submissive. And one thing that, you know, in this era, because fathers are so inadequate, you do have to do some teaching. Consider this. You have a multitude of women who would go to work and do everything that their employer says. Yet when they would clock out of work and you would give them a task, you know, they have a problem doing the task or they have a problem more likely doing it the way you dictated it to be done, which lets you know that they are so brainwashed and also their who they are has been cheapened to a degree to where they can be purchased. You see, they'll do what the boss says for, you know, 12 euro an hour or $25 an hour or 18 pounds an hour, whatever they're earning. But the boss is just paying out some money. Difference between you and the boss as that woman's man, if you're in a loving, committed relationship, is that if you indeed are a real man for that woman who is the start of your family, you should be willing to offer up your life. You know, if there ever was a situation where your family or her came under threat, you'd be willing to happily offer up your life. So you're dealing with a woman who wouldn't follow your direction to the T, but she would follow her boss's direction, yet you're the one who would offer up your life for that woman. So that's that's a good test for you gentlemen to ask yourself. It's like, damn, like I'm in love with her. I would offer my life for her. I would protect her. I'd risk my freedom for her. But damn, I, you know, I wanted her to do fill in the blank for me, whether it was cook up this meal or it was do this task within my business, or it was, uh, I want you to dirty talk to me or, or, or send me a video doing X, Y, and Z. Whatever you ask, it doesn't matter. Whatever you ask should be done. Full stop. Now, let me tell you why you're experiencing so much fake love. Shout out to Vintage supporting with badges. The reason you're experiencing so much fake love is because in this era, women are without a program. Previously, around the world, females would grow up with a simple program and it, it's worked for millennia. And the simple goal of every female who is reared properly is I would like to uh, get married, find a good man for me. And, and they had reasonable expectations of the man. They didn't expect the man to be beautiful like they are. They didn't expect the man to be wealthy like Elon Musk. They didn't expect the man to be popular like Drake. They were looking for a good man, not a famous man, not a rich man, a good man. And they would like to start a family. So they want a man and they want to have children. That is what women wanted. It was that simple. Now it's so complex, isn't it? Now, as a result of women, A, not having a goal and knowing what they want, and I'll give you an example of how we know this is true. I talked to a lot of women. Shout out to Mr. Peel coming through with the badge support. I've talked to a lot of women, very educated women. And I say, well, hey, uh, you know, what, what, what are your goals? What's your goal? And generally, they don't know. It, generally, their goal is school. Oh, I'm going to get a degree in this. Or I'm going to get a de degree in that. And then you're like, okay, well, what job does that turn into? They don't even know. So it's like, 
why are you in school? You're going to school for no reason. You don't even know what that turns into. Then they'll say something lofty. They'll go Greta Thunberg on you. They'll say, oh, I want to change the world. That's how you know they're brain dead. Like, first off, the world is going to change inevitably. Change is inevitable. Improvement is something that must be designed and driven through effort. So they'll say things like, I want to change the world. Just the language lets you know they're not going to get it done and they don't really understand the world. And then secondly, you say, oh, OK, that, that's brilliant. Uh, how do you want to change the world? And they'll say, oh, I don't know. Like, maybe I'll do this or maybe I do that. Or they'll say something that's been said a thousand times. Oh, I want to help the climate. You know, I want to stop climate change. They'll say something that's grand and largely impossible, which is to say, they don't have any true direction. They do not know the path to happiness for them as an individual human female. And because they're lost and without a goal, what they're really doing on a day-to-day -day basis, shout out to uh, Charlie or two uh, supporting with badges. What they're really doing on a daily basis is pursuing immediate pleasure, which is the most immoral thing to do. And how does the female pursue immediate pleasure? Well, she uses Tinder, which is a love casino. And I, by the way, I coined that term. You dig? Holla at your boy, which is a love casino. So they're addicted to Tinder. They're constantly swiping. Why? Because it gives them a reinforcement of attention. And then what else do they do? You know, you'll even see chicks on Tinder and their profile will say looking for friends. Well, this is really a filthy thing because Tinder's a dating app. It's not a friend app. It's not a networking app. You want a network? Go on LinkedIn. You want a network? Go outside. So what they're really saying is, I'm on here for friends, even though all of the men are on here either for sex or for love. The men are here for sex or love, both of which fall under the romantic category. So what I'm doing is I'm on here for friends, which means when I'm in need of attention or a free meal, huh? Or just to get outside or to see something new or to try out a new restaurant or go to the new art uh, exhibit. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and that one guy that I was texting with a little bit on Tinder, I was ghosting him every now and then. I'll let him take me out on a date. He keeps asking. I'll go ahead and reply and let him take me out on a date so I can eat for free. <laughs> and then what happens? Because, you know, we're all human. They're human. Familiarity. They get, a you know, the familiarity continues because the guy stays persistent. She's like, all right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're talking now. We're dating now. But she really don't. She can really never love you. She could never love you. And she just went out on those dates to enjoy herself. Huh? Huh? So then you get fake love. And then it gets deeper. There are deeper levels of fake love. Shout out to King Chroma supporting the work. You see, it's quite crazy because the fake love is harder and harder to identify as time goes on because as a male, we've been conditioned under the idea that we are the providers. And so as a provider, you know, you're, you're paying for meals and whatever else you might move in together. You're, you're covering certain expenses and you're providing, you're doing your part. Now, here's the thing. This is how you actually define a gold digger when she's there just because of what you provide. You see, the things that you provide to a gold digger might be the same things you provide to a wife or to a girlfriend or to a fiance. The things you provide are the same. Huh? But the exchange, there's no reciprocity, which is to say that you might provide your wife with a Chanel bag, you know, great vacations, you know, cover the expenses. Well, what she's providing you with in return is pure love and affection. She's going to cook up meals. She's going to make sure the house is clean and in order. She's going to help you with your business. She's going to give you a massage and not expect a massage in return. huh? When she sees you're stressed out, she's going to make sure that she makes you, you orgasm and she's not going to expect it in return. Why? Because she is there for your service. And at some level, you've earned this. I'm not saying you purchased it directly, but it is indeed the nature of human existence in that we're making exchanges. Now, conversely, with the gold digger, because she's not really there for you or the one who's giving fake love, which is essentially a version of a gold digger, lower degree. She's giving you fake love, right? Which means she's getting all the benefits of a woman that is serving, except she's not serving. She's serving out words. She's serving out words of affection. But she's not actually delivering on the service that underlies true commitment and emotion. Huh? Yeah. So if you're ever dealing with a female and you ask her, what does she want in the next couple years as an adult? 
and she doesn't say like, and, and this is a, a you're, you're going to have to rule out so many women. And I'm going to tell you some stories of women that I've kicked to the curb. They always have a, a lot of trouble accepting it. But if she does not say, I want to be married within this number of years, she's the wrong one. If she does not speak of a husband or a man in the equation, she's the wrong one. If she, if she doesn't speak of children, she's probably the wrong one. Hmm? And one of the telltale red flag signs, if she says something like, I hate kids, you're like, you hate kids? By kids, are we talking about the smaller versions of us that still have their innocence and they're cute and they haven't gone through trauma and the experience of life that gives you scars? You talking about those innocent little beings that are cute and soft and sweet? You don't like those? That's strange because as a female, you're actually wired to like kids. So something's probably wrong with you. Or you could just be an outlier, but hey, we don't want that kind of outlier. So... Anytime you ask a female as an adult, what do you want? And she doesn't say uh, a man, a marriage, children, family, then her programming is messed up. And what most females will say today, and notice I said females, not women, you know, real woman wants what I named. What they'll start telling you about is their career aspirations, their educational aspirations. Hey, what do you want for yourself over the next couple of years? Oh, I want to get my PhD and I'm going to be a postdoc in this lab. And then I want to run for office. And you're like, Wait, you want to run for office? But I'd asked you earlier what your life is about. And then you said you want to change the world, but you couldn't tell me specifically how, but you want to run for office. Oh, that's brilliant. You're going to be a great help to the world. You're just pursuing your own narcissism. More on the fake love piece. Now trip on this. And this is just truly magical. Males, we live firmly in reality. If a guy is a janitor, which is a valuable job in, this, in any society, he is aware that he's a janitor and he is aware uh, of how that ranks him in the society. Conversely, a woman, <laughs> you hear me? let me give you a litmus test to see if your woman is worthwhile. This is what you ask her. And this is going to get deep. You hear me? They ain't going to like this, but go through this process anyways. You ain't got to be rude about it. But go through this process with Shorty. Say, hey, love. Um... Tell me of one thing that, that you do or have done with excellence. And, and if they like don't know what to say. So in the area of education, um, athletics or career, like you know, one one area of life in which you've achieved excellence. Generally, they're not going to have any answer. OK, that's going to let you know that. She's regular. She's an average person, which there's nothing wrong with being an average person. But here's the thing that I want you guys to pay attention to. They manage to be an average person, but still feel like they're remarkable. (laughs) You know, that's the challenge. You heard me? That's why most women can't accept an average guy. Shout out to Keandre, just bought a badge. They can't accept an average guy because they don't realize that they're average. That's why they all want the, the rich guy, the famous guy, the guy flying around the world like James Bond. Uh, not realizing that they're average. Now, why do I advise you guys to seek a woman who ex- who has shown excellence in one of these areas, athletics, education, or career? The reason that I tell you that is because these things show that this woman knows how to be consistent, disciplined, and put in a lot of effort to find distinction. She knows how to be above average, do things with excellence. Now you might be saying, Marquette, you know, is this against the ism? Like if she has achieved excellence in her career, isn't this a bad thing? No, no, it's not. You have to understand the difference between a woman who is highly competent and a woman who is a career woman. You see, a woman who is competent, highly competent, she could be a career woman, It's a choice and she could excel at that, but she could also choose to primarily be a wife or a homemaker or a mother and excel at that. You see, that's a choice. For example, I'm highly competent in boxing. I could choose to be a boxer because I'm highly competent. I could take that as a career, but I choose not to. I choose to dedicate that same level of discipline to other pursuits. So you want a woman who is highly competent, and if she's competent in the career area, that means that if you plug her into your business, she's going to be helpful to you. Huh? You don't want a career woman. A career woman is a woman who has masculine instincts and ambitions. 
A career woman is the one who wants to compete with the fellas and be around the fellas. And she's going to go to happy hours and business trips. And she's going to be susceptible to the same things that you and I are susceptible to. Huh? Shout out to Tommy supporting with badges. So the career woman is a dangerous character. And truth be told, she's never going to be happy. She's not going to be happy herself and she's not going to make anyone else happy. And God forbid she gets pregnant. She's going to be a detriment to her family and especially to that child. Because what do children need? They need attention. They need attention. They need someone to watch over them and, and love on them. And a career woman can't do that because she is the ultimate narcissist. huh? Now, let's go back. I said, you, you asked that woman, does she, has she ever achieved or displayed or been recognized for excellence in athletics, education, or um, career? I particularly like when the female has been recognized for excellence in education because uh, the way you thrive in the American or shall we say Western educational system is really to be a, a, a great female. That's how you thrive, which is to say that the educational system from elementary through middle school, high school is all rules based. Can you follow rules consistently and to the T? That's what the educational system is about. Can you follow rules? And if they thrive within the educational system, it lets you as a man know that, yes, baby girl knows how to follow rules and she's smart and consistent. And those are great qualities that she can apply to her life with you. Now, if you fit, if you meet a girl who is, uh, you know, was an average student. Oh, it's a red flag. You heard me? You meet a girl who dropped out of college. Oh, it's a red flag. <laughs> she can't complete stuff. <laughs> she don't know how to be dedicated. She can't be dedicated to school. Can't be dedicated to you. Pay attention here. Huh? The third part is athletics. Now, you have to be careful about this one because the females who excel in athletics, they've, of course, been around a, a lot of persons who engage in sexually deviant practices, if you know what I mean. And so they may have been exposed to some unfortunate things. But generally speaking, the same thing with um, those who are good without athletics uh, as women, they learn a lot of critical lessons, particularly lessons that enable them to better follow men. And even in female athletics, you find that most of their um, coaches are still males. You look at a female basketball team, even female volleyball teams, often they'll have male coaches, which is quite comical. But it means that they have been raised up taking orders from men. And most importantly, they've been on a team and teams are hierarchical organizations, which means that she has been taught to respect hierarchy. The actual nature of the female is to believe in equality. I don't want to get too deep, but briefly, I'll say when boys are growing up, they grow up using teams, basketball team, baseball team, football team, and there's hierarchy and there's positions. There's a quarterback and different positions. And that's hierarchy. So that's why we respect hierarchy and we can respect when we're not at the top. Women, on the other hand, they or females rather, they don't grow up playing team games. They grow up playing Barbie dolls. There's no hierarchy to buy Barbie dolls. How do you win at Barbie dolls? You don't win at Barbie dolls. It's not a competition. Equality. No one wins because then that would set uh, an asymmetrical relationship and then someone's insecurity is going to get triggered. So that's basically a good thing when the chick has been on a team because she understands a little bit more of the real world. Shout out to Wade came through uh, supporting with badges and shout out to Mitchell supporting with badges as well. So those are the key pieces to being able to screen the female. And when you're screening these females every now and then you're going to have to kick some of them to the curb, especially if you're a man in a strong position. And when you kick them to the curb, you know, it's almost funny because it's like they they don't comprehend. You know, one thing that I never do is if I can tell a female doesn't recognize my position in this world, you heard me showing she can't identify what a boss is. She can't figure out the fact like, you know what? I may never encounter a man like this again in my life. If she doesn't get that feeling when she's dealing with me, I move them to the side. And we had 20 people support with badges. I appreciate all of you. Shout out to the real ones standing up. I get rid of her immediately. And sometimes they're surprised. Like, for example, uh, there was a young lady um, I pulled up and I said, hey, um, you know, let's hang out. Actually, she had told she had asked me to hang out. She had actually asked me to hang out. And I said, yeah, for sure. Um, tonight or tomorrow. Listen to me tonight or tomorrow. And she says, oh, well, what about Sunday? No, nah, no, thanks. She said, what? I was like, "Nah, 
I don't plan that far out in advance for non-business things, things I'm not being paid to do or required to do. No, no, thank you. And she was like, so what are you, what are you saying? I was like, I'm, she was like, I'm just busy. I was like, yeah, no, 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 I understand. I understand being busy. I run four corporations. I'm busy too. So I have the utmost respect for you being busy because I run four corporations. I'm busy as well. And because of that, I want to truly thank you for even offering me time to spend with you. I really do appreciate it. But no, I can't schedule that far out for something like this, <laughs> right? Like, you know, we're going to go get some food or have some ice cream, whatever it was. I'm not going to schedule out like that's important. That's not important t- to me, you know. And more importantly, as a seasoned and experienced businessman, I know for sure that urgency is the greatest indicator of a deal getting closed, right? So if you're in business and someone's delaying, the deal's not going to get, get done. Same thing in romance, in, in dating. If you, you know, meet a young lady and you invite her out and she wants to like, oh, you know, let's go out next week. You, you're not about to go out with her. She's going to flake. She's going to have an excuse. She's going to be sick. There's going to be all kinds of uh, lies that she'll confront you with. And even if she was telling the truth, it doesn't matter because she's not that interested that she's going to push it out, you know, out way out. Because here's the thing. When someone's interested, they get motivated. I remember when uh, I was a youngster and Chris, it was Christmas time. Do you know how urgent I was about Christmas? Oh man, I couldn't wait for Christmas to happen. It was a big deal to me. My emotions were engaged. So if you have a female that you're dealing with and her emotions are not engaged to the point where she has a level of urgency, then you don't really have anything. And the beautiful feeling of you know telling the chick no thank you, it reinforces in your mind your self-worth. And when you truly feel your self-worth as a man, and ideally, gentlemen, you are worth something. You are valuable. You hear me? Shout out to uh, DMAS2 Global. Just got a badge. When you actually are valuable, you could tell you could tell a beautiful woman like, nah, nah, I, I'm not going to go out with you this weekend. Uh, it's Monday and I said we can go out tonight or Tuesday and you said Sunday, so no thank you. Now one, <laughs> boy, they're going to go ape shit, man. I promise you. They're going to start you know, asking dumb questions. They're going to start double texting you is going to boggle their mind because they're trying to reconcile mentally having you on one hand who said, nah, I'm not interested anymore versus the 300 guys on Tinder who are all messaging the same thing. Hey, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing this weekend? Hey, when can we hang out? Hey, do you want to FaceTime? Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, nice to meet you. You're so hot. So there, there's one of you who's saying, nah, I'm not interested. And there's 300 of these nerds. And they're now perplexed as to why they can't get you to behave like these nerds over here. huh? So ironically, though you kicked her to the curb and you're never going to let her get back in the game. Now she really wants to get back in the game. You heard me? And what's more, she's going to be talking about you. Oh, believe that. Yeah, believe that. She's going to be talking greasy about you to her mother, to her girlfriends, all that. But there's going to be embedded in that a level of respect. And if she is to deal with you again in the future, she's going to have a level of respect to where uh, someone sends a question. <laughs> what does it mean if your girl, uh, if a girl you're dating doesn't take photos with you and doesn't randomly call you? I'm going to answer that right now. So if a girl does not take photos with you and that's her nature, you know, she's not one who takes photos in general. So be it. That makes perfect sense. If you have a girl who takes photos on a regular basis, she's taking photos of herself, posting them or taking photos of herself and DMing them to you on a regular basis, that means that at some level she believes she's photogenic and for some reason she likes capturing moments and memories, but not with you in them. Shout out to Alex. He just bought a badge. So that should tell you something. And I'll give you another indication of this because you know I, I get a diversity of experience Like, for example, earlier today, I was just getting my workout in. Two uh, curious things. Um, One, a a guy had walked up and he was like, hey, 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 um, I'm a photographer. Can I take some photos of you while you're working? You don't have to do anything different. I just want to take some photos. I was like, carry on, bro. I was like, bro, I'm going to be working out here regardless, man. You want to take some photos, take some photos. Finished my workout. 
And uh, he came up to me and was like, yeah, I'm, I actually work for the newspaper. And so we can always use photos like this. And the light was looking good. So, you know, nothing weird. I got a wife and, and kids. I, I just we can use these you know, for the newspaper. I was like, oh, that's dope, man. I love to be in the Polish newspaper. But what I noticed was while the guy was taking photos, there were two girls who had came outside of the coffee shop. They actually worked at the coffee shop. And then when the photographer started taking photos, they were recording and taking photos on their phone as well. This has happened a ton of times that chicks will just be taking photos of me or sometimes they'll like ask if they can be in a photo with me. Um, and whether it's I'm exercising or sometimes they just like the drip. They're like, whoa, that outfit is crazy. That, sh that jacket is crazy. Can we take a pic? It is to express to you that the nature of human beings is when they experience something remarkable or someone memorable or someone that's special or has meaning to them, they want to take a photo. So it would be absolutely atypical behavior if your lady does not want to take a photo with you in it. So, yes, I, I would be curious about that. Absolutely. I, I think that's something to be suspicious of when you say she doesn't randomly call you. You know, some things you should be thankful for. You dig? And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're living your life in the right way and your life is rich with good things, if she doesn't call you, it might be a blessing. You hear me? Because when you're really living life in the correct way, you are in demand. You know, I, I got so many DMs that I haven't opened and, and you know, I, I just may never get to. I have emails that I've not opened. I may never get to. I got text messages I have not opened. I may never get to. When you're living life the right way, you'll be in demand. So right now, be thankful that she's not just another person asking for your time because your time is highly valued. And more importantly, if you're living life in a more natural way, and that's what we have to get back to, you know, your time away should be your time away. You know, if you go out with your girl on Monday, you know, you guys meet up, have lunch, and then you drop her off at 7 p.m., it's okay if she doesn't say anything to you until she's going to bed. She just give you a good night text. You know, the the constant contact thing that is, you know, you might have been raised in the porn generation or the generation that was raised by iPads. But either way, this is not a good way of living and you saturate the market, so to speak. You 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 give her too much of you, which makes it easier for her to get tired of you. Scarcity is much better, which is to say in the courting process, when you first meet the girl, you got to hunt her down. You got to pursue her. The moment she becomes yours, the dynamic changes and forevermore she should pursue you. Huh? And let's be real here. Over time, we find that the, the male is the one that has greater value. And uh, I don't say that to be rude or impolite. I just say that in as much as if you look at the science on menopause, for example, the female is going to inevitably go through menopause. It's going to affect her body. It's going to affect her ability to want and deliver sex. It's going to even affect her brain. There are brain scans on premenopausal women and uh, women during and post menopause, and they're a different person. So the male is staying fairly consistent over time, which is to say you're maintaining the value you've always had. You know, I think starting at age 35 or like in your mid to late 30s, you lose like 1% testosterone you know, yearly, which is not the kind of radical change that women experience with uh, menopause, which is to say that men are retaining their value better. And so, yes, yeah, she should be pursuing you, especially because you don't have to get pregnant and you know, have your body destroyed. When a woman gets pregnant, her body's destroyed. Now she really needs to stick to that man that got her pregnant because other men are going to be less interested in her. Conversely, if I go out tonight and get 30,000 of these beautiful Polish women pregnant, I'm going to look exactly the same. I might probably even look more fit. You heard me because I was putting in that work. So I'll probably look better anyways. You dig? Tommy writes, I often get called a pretty boy. I have long dreads. I can't help but feel offended because I don't see myself as pretty because I'm a man. Am I overthinking this? Yeah, you are overthinking it and you got to appreciate it. You feel me? There's certain things that it just is what it is and you have to be thankful for it. Um, one of the most gangster individuals I, I've ever known was a pretty boy, very good looking gentleman, tall, well-built, very good looking. In fact, he was a model, and he was, but he was also a gangster, Nick Noel, uh, you know, shout out to the dead homies. He ended up getting killed, some gangster shit. He ended up getting murdered, but you know, he was a pretty boy, but he would also beat the shit out of you in a moment's notice. And at the end of the day, you got to appreciate being a pretty boy, uh, which is to say that if you're a good looking man, you have a great advantage over many people. And if you're good looking enough that people would speak on that, then, you know, you're in good shape. And I remember when I was a youngster, I went to my uncle's funeral 
And my great uncle had saw me as a youngster and he said, oh, you ain't nothing but a little girl. And he's like, you pretty like a little girl. And what he was referring to is just the fineness of my features. Like my eyebrows grow like this. My nose is fairly narrow. You know, he's just referring to the features and it just is what it is. That's who you are. And it's something to be thankful of. You know, you'd much rather look as you do than look like, uh, you know, Bernie Mac or Kodak Black. You heard me? Yeah, no disrespect to, to Bernie Mac. Actually, he, he was not bad looking, but Kodak Black is a crusty individual. You dig? Someone said, am I live on YouTube as well? No, I'm just live on IG right now. I am exclusively live on Instagram. The funny thing about, you know, females is that they're they're tremendously, <laughs> tremendous liars. And I hate to say that. And it's not even always malicious. The, the worst part about it is that, you know, when they're doing it, they feel like it's quite harmless. And the reason it's important for me to bring that up is with regards to the fake love and, and how they lead you guys on. They lead you on. So. Do you ever experience that when a chick is not going to deliver what she knows you're seeking, that she tells you the truth, right? Like, have any one of you ever invited a chick to go out on a date and then she messaged you and she, she said, you know what? I agreed to go on a date, but actually, I realized that I'm actually not feeling you that much. Or, you know, I, I thought about it and I was like, you know, I'm not really attracted to you that much. Has a chick ever told you that? Like, hell no, nah, they don't get real like that. What they'll say instead is like, Oh, you know, I'm trying to focus on school or <laughs> or I think we'd be better as friends or I'm just trying to think of the stuff people tell me. I never get this stuff. You hear me? I never get this stuff. But they they say white lies. And the reason that they do this is because of what I said earlier. In this era, women are not focused on marriage and children. And because they're not focused on marriage and children, it leads them to having a lot of casual encounters with men which is why a lot of them have very high body counts. They've slept with a lot of guys. They've had physical uh, interaction with a lot of guys. They'll never admit it, but they have. And because they're not pursuing marriage consciously, they're willing to engage in a number of things that are not fulfilling spiritually, but maybe fulfill them in a literal sense sexually. So friends with benefits, huh? Yeah, you heard of that? Yeah, they engage in these kinds of things. And they they use Tinder as their instrument. Just imagine how many guys a girl could sleep with using Tinder. It, it's tremendous, right? So she's using you as a piece of a Frankenstein of a man that she puts together. So understand this. This is why you get lied to. She has one guy that she sleeps with, right? Okay, cool. He's friends with benefits. She has another guy that she uses for text. You know, maybe she she texted other people and they didn't respond, but if she texts Justin, Justin's always going to respond. He's always there for me. He's so reliable. And so she uses Justin as her like her text boyfriend, if you will. Uh? Now she didn't tell Justin that he's friend-zoned and he is, but he'll never know cuz subconsciously she knows that if she lets Justin know that he's completely friend-zoned, Justin's going to disappear. Because Justin's fuel, the gas that he's running on that makes him so responsive to her, it's called hope. He hopes that she'll one day go out with him. He hopes that she'll uh, return his affections, but he's going to suffer unrequited love the whole way through. Uh, the saint has a question. He writes, my girlfriend introduced me to her parents, but sometimes she texts me back slow. Thoughts. One, you need to understand the type of female that she is. There are are a rare, you know, very small group of females who just really aren't into phones and texting and uh, social media like that. There's a very small group. However, most chicks are not in that small group. And you get a slow text message back. Oh, she read your text message. Absolutely. She read it. Now, why she didn't text back straight away? There could be a variety of reasons for that. But it's not a good sign. And here's the most important piece, Saint. If you prefer to date a woman who texts back quickly, you're probably going to just need a different woman. Complaining to her is going to make you look like a sucker. huh? Complaining to her is going to make you look... Uh, shout out to Tony. He writes, uh, uh, what percent of women are competent, feminine, and hot? Yeah, fucking damn near none. But anyways, I'm going to get back to that, Tony. 
Um, if you complain to the girl for not texting you back quickly, one, it shows that you have too much fucking spare time, which you do. And I'm telling you this, Marquette Devon Burton, I'm telling you, you have too much spare time. I'm telling you that you're not living life the right way right now. And I know for sure, because I can guarantee you if I take out, if I get off this call and I text five chicks, I'm going to text all five of them. You're me. Some of them are going to respond ASAP. Some of them might take a little while. Who knows? I don't know. Because I'm not checking to see when they respond. You hear me? I sent off those five text messages and then I got back on my goals. I got back fo- focused on the things that matter. And let me tell you why these women don't matter at all. Because most of them are whores. Huh? Most of them are trying to use you. They want to go on a free vacation, but they don't want to give you any vagina. They don't want to give you any brain. They don't want to you know, serve you. You give them a simple task. They can't do it. Huh? They don't matter. Yeah. No, they'll start mattering when they're putting in the work. And because of that, I might text them, but then I get back to the things that do matter, you see, because those women are fickle, which is to say that even if she does reply quickly, that doesn't mean she's not replying quickly to three other guys. Huh? That doesn't mean that she doesn't have some other flaws that are going to be detrimental to you in the relationship. So one thing you always got to rely on is like, okay, cool. I sent those text messages out. I planted some seeds. Huh? Maybe they grow, maybe they don't. Doesn't matter because I got a whole garden of seeds that I'm planting. But the seeds that I know are guaranteed to grow if I water them with time, effort, and energy, ah, those are the seeds of my businesses, huh? Those are the seeds of my relationships, not dealing just with the romantic relationships, but what about my friendships? What about my family, huh? When you're sitting waiting on a text back from abroad, it's like, damn, bro, like, you, where are your peers at? You know, there are times I, you know, I might DM with the homies, you know, just, just enjoying reminiscing. I might, you know, call up the homie. I might do a FaceTime with the homie. Pause. You dig? Enjoying friendship. We get hung up on the females and we dedicate too much time and energy to them. And what that does is it empowers them with the ability to destroy your happiness. Yes. You've invested too much into them and they have all of your happiness in their hand and they're clumsy. You know, they might drop, you know, and let it break. Yeah, they destroy your happiness. Well, really, you destroyed your happiness. And all of this, um, the the sentiment that you're expressing right now, you got to get away from this because you're really in the female position. You see, it's not the male, it's not the male position to be sitting at home with a phone like, oh, like, why didn't he text me? Sitting at home is what the female should do. Out in the world is what the male should do. You know, you should be about your business. You know, you're, you're out doing X, Y, and Z. You're at the gym. You know, you're at a networking event. You know, you're at a salsa dancing class. You're traveling around the world, whatever it may be. The woman should be at home most of the time. You heard me? She might go to school. She might go to work, but she always needs to be at home. You dig? You need to be out functioning. So when you're out functioning, you don't really have concern over with what's going on on that phone. Try that out. He writes, that makes sense, but she never declines intercourse. And she sends me TikTok, TikToks, planning future plans, thoughts. Well, not declining sex. This this is not a, you know, that's not a, that doesn't speak to great merit. I mean, I know a lot of whores who don't deny sex. You know what I'm saying? They're whores. That's why they, they, they enjoy sex. You heard me? You know, I got chicks that I, that want more sex than I do. It's actually quite uncomfortable, to be honest with you. So that's not really a metric. Sex only becomes something to think twice about when a chick is denying it. You heard me? Shout out to Mark supporting with badges. Sex is something to think twice about when a chick is denying it and she's doing that strategically. So that, that's one instance. When you're saying that she sends you TikToks, <laughs> um, that's cool, man. That's like kind of like the the way chicks nowadays uh, communicate, especially longer, uh, younger girls. That's cool. You know, at the end of the day, though, you have to ask yourself, what are the things you cannot stand? Here's some some gold. This is some gold that an OG gave me when I was uh, 16 years old. He told me this. He said, Marquette, uh, you're a good looking, smart young man with charm and all the things women want. You will not have a challenge getting a woman. You uh, need to not make a list of the things you want in a woman because you'll be able to get those things. 
He says, but that's not what causes a marriage to break. What causes a marriage to break are the things that you don't like about the woman. So rather than making a list and pursuing all the things you want, he says, you know, in life, you pursue your goals. But with regards to women in marriage, shout out to uh, MSAR War 94. He said, in marriage, you, you want to get a, uh, make a list of all the things you hate and all the things you can't stand in a woman, all the things you hate and all the things you cannot stand and avoid those things like the plague, which is to say that, you know, you might like a girl with a big booty. You know I mean? you might want a girl with a big booty, but you can marry a girl that doesn't have a big butt. You heard me? You could deal with that. But say you end up with a girl with a big butt because that's what you love, right? She has a big old butt because you love that. But she also might be unfaithful and that you can't deal with, right? So you'll be much wiser to make that list of the things you cannot stand and stick with it. So if for you, you can't stand her not responding in a timely fashion to your text messages, get rid of her, you know, or give her one warning. And if she can't comply, get rid of her. And you might say, Quet, why are you so quick to get rid of these O's? Shout out to Wiz, supporting with the badges. I'm quick to get rid of them because mostly people don't change, right? We are who we are. And certainly if we decide to change, it won't be for someone else, generally speaking. It'll be because there's some legitimate reason we wanted to change ourselves. And if she's currently not responding quickly to your text messages, I highly doubt she perceives that to be, you know, her responding quicker to your text messages to be something that's going to help her in life, right? So I'm not saying she's a bad person. You just might not be her ideal. She, you know, or she might be legitimately busy or she might not use a phone that often. But if she's a young female, it's improbable. You can ask her about it if you're curious and then you could just let her know, hey, I prefer your responses to be quicker or you could just stop texting her. You feel me? And then she don't have to respond at all. All you got to do now is respond to her text messages. You dig what I'm saying? Now you flip the dynamic. So instead of you messaging her, she not responding right. Stop messaging. Now she's messaging you and you can respond some late if you want, or you can respond not at all, or you can respond promptly, but it'll change the nature of the conversation. But the worst thing you can do is be engaged with a person, whether it's your mother, your father, your friends, family, females, is engage with a person expecting them to do something different that's outside of their character. Most people don't change. You be smart to adapt, but not expect them to adapt because what's within your locus of control is you. You can't control her. Now, you might say, Quet, how could a P say you can't control a female? You see, there's a difference between controlling a female and a female submitting to you. You see, when you try to control a female, that's when you're trying to, you know, you're exercising a lot of energy. When a female submits to you, you're not exercising any energy. You heard me? She's laying it all down to you and saying, tell me what to do. Tell me what the program is. I want to follow it. Sign me up. That's different. That's effortless. That's beautiful. But controlling a female, that's not player. Don't, don't ever, ever, ever fall into that. Um, may I acknowledge via cash app? Shout out to Tony. He writes, uh, what percent of women are competent, feminine, and hot? Bruh, quit playing with me, bruh. Um, shit, even the ugly ones are not both competent and feminine very much. So the hot aspect of it, you know, hell, you could look at a hundred ugly women and still not find ones that are competent and feminine. Finding the feminine ones, these come in higher numbers. Feminine females, this comes in higher numbers. Competent is actually something that's harder to do. And this is something that real men focus on competence in the female. You know, if I tell her to do something, can she focus? Can she get it done? Increasingly, these chicks are goofballs and brain dead. You want her to be competent, feminine, and hot? Well, there's not a lot of them. The percentage really doesn't matter because no matter what the percentage is, you got to get one, right? So understand this, Tony. If I told you the percentage is 1%, you got to go find it. If I told you the percentage is 50%, you got to go find it. It'll be easier. But it doesn't matter what the percentage is because you got to go find it. And the truth is things that are rare are always going to be hard to find. So when you... Consider anything that's difficult or rare. If you're a man who's above average, these are the things that are meant for you. And I remember when I was applying to law schools and you know, people say, oh, well, what law schools are you applying to? 
shout out to Mel Vincent point with the badges. I say, oh, I'm applying to you know this Ivy League and that Ivy League and this Ivy League. And they say, whoa, those schools are really competitive. And then I'd be like, yeah, I'm a competitor, right? Like those are the schools that people like me go to. That's why I'm applying. These are appropriate ones for me to apply to. You know, that's like somebody I'm like, yeah, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go buy a car. They're like, oh, well, what kind of car are you looking to get? And I'm like, a Maybach. They're like, whoa, that's expensive. I'm like, okay, all right. You know, obviously, I this is within my my price range. That's why I'm going. And I also want you guys to be mindful of dealing with women who are on your level, or ideally, you know, especially on the financial side, a level above, or at least they were raised a level above. And this is why a woman who grew up broke does not have generally doesn't have ambition because females generally are, are not infused with ambition. And she also might not understand ambition and doesn't know how to support ambition. If she grew up and her father wasn't a hustler, you dig? And this is what I mean. Recently, I asked a young lady, I use this to qualify her. You heard me? I actually DQ'd her, Ugh, kicked her to the side. I said, hey, what, what's your goal? And she said, oh, you know, over the next couple of years, I, don't, I really don't know. Yeah, I want to go up, but I, I, don't, I don't really know. And in my head, I was like, mm, you're done. She's like, what about you? I was like, well, over the next 10 months, I want to um, I want to get this car that's $300,000. And she's like, whoa, that's a big goal. I'm, I'm wishing, the, oh, that's, that's going to be hard. I'm wishing you good luck. And I'm like, no, actually, that's not going to be hard at all. Like, all I have to do is earn approximately $35,000 that I don't need, which is easy to do every month for 10 months. That's not hard at all. If I said I was going to do it in one month, yeah, that would be hard. But doing that in 10 months, that's not hard at all. I don't even, it's not even an ambitious goal, which is to say it's foreign to her. You feel me? Like she doesn't know anybody that has quarter of a million dollar cars. So when you tell her something like that, it's like she doesn't even really believe it. It's not real. So being that it's not real to her, she can't properly support a goal like that. Conversely, if you're dating a, a girl who grew up wealthy and her dad drives Bentley, Rolls Royce, Lambo, you know, and all these exotic cars that are very expensive and you tell her like, yeah, um, I think I want to get a Cullinan, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, for sure. That's a great car. Like my dad has one. Yeah, you should for sure get one. You know, like she with it. She comprehends it. She knows how to support that. It makes sense to her. You've not boggled her mind. You're speaking her language, so to speak. She likes to hear that. She wants to see you with it. She can imagine it. But you talk to a girl that's broke, like, and, and that's why I want to encourage you guys not to be uh, following this red pill nonsense. A lot of these guys are like, you know, a high value man, you know, we'll date anybody. We'll date a waitress. We'll date a girl who like works at 7-Eleven. And I'm like, uh, you could, or you could not. You will be like, you could do that, or you could date a chick who you know, is in the C-suite at a corporation. You could date a female who um, is very well educated or is high up in government or, you know, is a trust fund baby. You did, you, you could date somebody that can upgrade you. And you don't have to deal with these low level women because there's a reason that they're low level. The reality is that the level that the woman is at is an expression of her reality of who she is at some level. And I, I even warn you, and by the way, Instagram is going to kick me off in one minute. So if you have a question, send it in now. But if you observe a beautiful woman in a low position, she is extremely dysfunctional. I want to repeat that one more time. If you observe a beautiful woman in a low position, she is extremely dysfunctional because a beautiful woman can get promoted in a job just from being beautiful, as long as she's not a screw up. So if a beautiful woman's in a low position, that's letting you know she's a screw up, okay? <laughs> Take that to the bank. Um, anyway, Saints, um, Instagram is cutting down at limit seas to an hour. I appreciate all of you who have uh, supported the work with your um, super chats and uh, your badges, your cash apps, PayPal. Um, thank you very much. And uh, maybe I'll try another one of these sometime soon. Peace of the Saints.